Hey folks, G-Man here from Elite Customs. I'm going to do a uh, famous fly for y'all. It was invented nearly 30 years ago by a man named Bob Clauser. It's called the Clauser Minnow. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyways, this fly is very effective in fresh water and salt water. It's made from one inch all the way up to nine inches with synthetic hair. I like to tie it for fish in my local river for smallmouth and walleye. It's very effective for both species and occasionally I'll throw it on a spinning rod because you do put lead eyes on it. It makes the, wi makes the weight of it what you want depending on the size of the eyes and uh, I get the size I like, which is about 3 16 of an ounce. And I generally throw this with my fly fishing. But occasionally I'll get the spinning rod right out, ultra light rod and reel. So I got in the vise as a number two hook, and it's a weedless hook, so I like to take the barbs back and get them out of my way when I'm tying a fly and what you want to do is start a little ball about one third the shank and this is the foundation for putting your eye on like I said I got different size eyes these here are uh, lead eyes they're, they're kind of like a shiny barbell and I got a dull barbell here this is the heaviest one I got it's a 3 16 put it on the hook start wrapping your thread around it behind that ball you made about six times one direction and then about six times the other direction and then get it straight the way you want it then you do what is called a clinching of the eye which ain't going around I'm not going around, I'm not going over the shaft I'm just going under the eye and clinching the string that's holding it then I'll give it a few more wraps in each direction bring my thread, thread forward it's about a two minute tie, fly to tie once you get used to it Okay, I think today I'm going to do a baby bass. So, I'll take some super glue and lock in my eye so it surely doesn't move around on me. The way I'm tying this, this is the bottom of the fly. So when you throw it, the lead will cause it to spin upright. And that'll be the top. So if you think I'm tying the hair on in reverse, I'm not. So we'll start out with our white for the belly of the bass, baby bass, and get you about, oh, quarter pencil, three-eighths of bucktail, white bucktail. Take the hair and hold it on the very end and pull all the shorter fibers out. This is what a lot of fly tires make the mistake of when they tie bucktails. They get all the smaller hairs in the front where they're tying at that clumps. And it just makes a mess. And it's not as even. Okay. So I got that. Now I'll take all the stray ones out I don't want. That looks good. Now I want a nice even end, so I'll cut about a half off, nice and straight. So when I tie it on the shaft, it ties nice. Now you'll take it and tie it on an angle. A couple loose ones go back, tighten up as you go towards close to the eye. Tight. Then go back forward. 
and come back. Now you're going to take the hair, pull it parallel with the shaft, the shank of the hook. You don't want to pull it down on the hook. You don't, the purpose here is not to come behind the eye with your thread. You come around a couple times, pull it down, and you just want to keep that hair on top of that shank. You don't want it to wrap around the shank. Come back with your thread about 3 sixteenths. That's it. That's the belly. Now, I like to do something a little different than most Clauser tires. I'm a firm believer in flash. And the bass has a little gold in it. Gold tinge to it, even the small mouth. So I get the gold floss. This is Mylar or tinsel, I'm sorry. Mylar tinsel. This is a small. It's gold on one side and silver on the other. But I want the gold to show. So I'll come behind the eye on the side of the bait. And tie it on. With the gold facing. thing to sit right. My eyes ain't the best anymore. Okay. Then you want to cut it about the length of the hair. Flip it over and do the other side. If I can get some more off of this roll, where in the hell did it go? Okay, there's my tinsel. If you can see that. Gold tinsel. Now I'm gonna flip it upside down, which is actually right side up. And I'm gonna put some copper flash on it. Sorry about that. I'm going to go with the gold flash instead. Get about oh, 15 strands or so. You want about double the length of what the bucktail is. And take it. Put it behind your th thread. Double it up. Bring it up on your thread and pin it in place. Come back to the front. I like to take a needle, go in and separate them. Put half on each side of the hook shank. This time, I at this moment I like to wet the fly to keep everything back. Okay. Last but least, and get some olive green for the back of the baby bass. Again, about a quarter inch, three eighths 
a bucktail. I have a green bucktail. The lid at the end, pull the loose fibers out, short ones. Looks pretty good. I don't pull no strands out. Eh, maybe one. Okay. Cut my end nice and square. This time, we're not going to tie behind the eyes, just in front. tight nice reps okay now the weed guard goes back and I put some wraps in front of that keep it from coming back up Like I said, you don't have to tie this on a weed guard hook. I do because we got a lot of moss and stuff in that river and it really helps a lot. Separate my hairs in the middle. A couple more wraps. Whip finish it. And she's done. Get you some head cement or super glue. Glue your knot, it never comes loose. Now, the thing about this fly is since the top here is tight in the front and not bound on each side of the eye like the belly, it allows that hair on the back to wave more in the water when it's moving. It's 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 like a triggering thing for the bait that closet Bob Closet figured out. But uh, that's it. Only thing left to do is paint the eyes. I'll do them with the uh, white and black pupil, like a bass, and I'll put 30 minute epoxy on the head and the eye so it'll never come apart and she's ready to catch some fish all right peace